didn't just go through a time warp and you're not back in school, but today we are sitting in front of the board. And we're gonna do a little discussion today. Now, I'm not doing this video to step on anybody's toes. I'm doing this video to hopefully wake some of you people up out there and to get you to start thinking about what is going on and the things that have happened, the catastrophic things that have taken place just in this year. We're not talking about any type of pandemic or anything else. The catastrophic events that are going on and asking yourself this question, why are you afraid to be a prepper? So why are you afraid to be a pep prepper? Really, I mean, why are you afraid to be a prepper? What is holding you back? What are some of the things that run through your mind when you think about maybe starting be, to be prepared for a natural disaster, a catastrophic event of any portion? This way here that maybe you have a chance of survival in this lovely world that we live in. Now, some people may not, may not want to live through anything, but then you have other people, whereas I'm not ready to go anywhere yet. So I want to be prepared to the best of my ability to what I can afford to do to make sure that I can secure a future for me and my family and probably some friends and that type of thing. It's not all about prepping just for you or maybe you and your wife or you and your significant other okay when you are prepping you're prepping to make sure that you have enough to obviously abstain you to get you through an emergency situation correct and you also have enough to where maybe you can help out a friend in the time of need maybe it's a family member in a time of need because realistically people if somebody was really hungry and especially if it's your family you're not going to turn them away so that's why you need to plan. But the question still stands. What is holding you back? And why are you afraid to be a prepper? Are you afraid for number one, the labeling part? Are you afraid to be labeled as a prepper? Now remember this, a prepper is somebody that preps for an emergency type situation that is make sure that they are prepared. A hoarder, as they like to call some preppers, Okay, that is somebody, a hoarder is somebody that basically collects everything. I mean, it's just junk. It's not gonna make them survive. I mean, granted, yeah, they probably have enough papers to burn to keep them warm for about a year. But what the, the fact of the matter is, they're collecting like newspapers, the old Chinese takeout containers, um, the milk jugs. They're collecting anything and everything they throw, nothing out, and it's worthless. As in a prepper, you're buying things, you're prepping things, you're prepping food, you're prepping emergency equipment, you're prepping emergency supplies, first aid, you're prepping some way to cook, you're prepping some way to make sure that you have power. You're prepping to survive. So the labeling part is something that is very easy to get over, all right? You don't want to be labeled as a prepper and you're afraid of being labeled as a hoarder, correct? Okay, let's move on to number two, peer pressure. Maybe you're getting peer pressure from maybe people you work with, maybe your family members in your own home. And all you're trying to do is make sure that they have and a way to survive. Sometimes people just don't get it until actually something drastically happens, a catastrophic event hits, and you whip out your survival gear and you have some way to cook, you have some way to, to clean water, you have some way to generate power, you have some way to take care of first aid. Then what do they think? They'll be thanking you all the way to the bank, folks. Let's move on to number three social acceptance now when you're thinking about prepping all right there's a lot of people out there that they don't get the whole prepping thing so they just want to just take and label you as a hoarder all right so your social acceptance part is 
your group of friends or family and things of this nature? And is it acceptable in your little group to what you're doing? The great thing is, is if you can convert, say, three or four of your friends or family members and get them to get on the bandwagon with you, one, it gives you somebody to start prepping with. Two, you can save money because if you go to a, quote, big box store, like a Sam's, Costco, BJ, something like that, and you buy in bulk and you split the products, you just saved a lot of money, okay? So the social acceptance is what you're looking for. You're afraid that everybody on in your social network is going to think that you're going crazy, right? I mean, come on. It's a fact of life. People are going to look at you like you're probably crazy. Now, there's going to be people out there that don't agree with what you're doing, and they're going to call you crazy. They're going to call you, you know, you're just, you know, oh, you're a doomsday dude. You're, you're this, you're that. When it boils down to it, folks, it's all in what you think you need to be doing. Because when, I'm just going to say it, when the shit hits the fan, and if it's a catastrophic event, a natural disaster, stuff that we can't control, and you have some way to survive, and they don't, well, guess who's going to be knocking on your door? Then you have the choice of, do you answer the door, or do you ignore it? That's a hard one. Moving on down the line. Number four. We just led right into that one. Being called crazy. Now, if you really sit back and think about it, we all have a crazy side now, don't we? Everybody goes through one of these things once in a while, and, you know, people say, oh, man, he's crazy, you know, or ah, that's a crazy idea, or this, oh, that's crazy. What is crazy? Being prepared? No, crazy is being not prepared. Think about that. If you're not prepared and you don't have any way, any backup to cook, clean water, charge your phones or flashlights or anything, um, who's crazy? Do you rely totally on the government and the states and everything else? No. If you do, you're a fool. You're the crazy one. Because the crazy people that are actually prepping, that, you know, you want to call me crazy? I, I don't care. Don't matter to me. My feelings don't get hurt with words, if you get what I'm saying. That's a hard thing for a lot of people, all right? I'm a totally different breed of person, all right? I was raised totally different than a lot of people nowadays. Now, a lot of people that are probably my age or a little bit older, now you understand where I'm coming from. I'm gonna do what I think is correct, and I don't care if people wanna la label me as crazy. I don't care if I'm social accepted. I don't care about anything. I don't care about peer pressure. Nobody's gonna pressure me. I'm doing what I'm doing to make sure that I can survive and I can provide for my family and I can maybe help out my friends in a time of need. Number five, ridiculed by friends and family. See kind of all these go right through. A big thing nowadays is a lot of people are really afraid of what their family is going to say. Now, depending on where your family lives, if they're not like right next door to you and they live say in another state across the country and another part of the world or whatever else, well, what the hell does it matter anyways? You have to be prepared, all right? And if they want to ridicule you by your friends and family, but if your family wants to ridicule you for trying to make sure that you can put food on the table, you can cook, you can clean water, um, you can make sure that if somebody gets hurt, you have first aid to take care of them, then who's the crazy one? Let them ridicule you all they want. Because, folks, in the end, you are the one that has to save your family. You are the only one. 
you're the one that has to make sure that your family has what they need. And it doesn't matter if they want to label you, if they want to pressure you, if they want to social you, your social acceptance, if they want to block you on Facebook or something like that, oh well, I mean, no love lost. Because in the end, those are the people that are going to be trying to seek you out to try and survive. And that's why a lot of preppers say you never store all your goodies in one box, if you get what I'm saying. Because they may want to try to come take whatever you may have. It's nice if you have stuff spread out. So, like, if you have other friends and family that are in prepping, maybe you store some of your goodies there. Maybe you have some place you can storm. Maybe you have a cabin in the woods. Maybe you bury it out in the woods somewhere and everything else and mark it so that you know where it is. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing that. But you don't always store all your eggs in one basket. And the reason is, the family that has called you crazy and ridiculed you and pressured you and labeled you will be knocking on your door in a time of need. So let them knock. I wouldn't answer. If they want to sit here and they want to call me crazy and everything else and do whatever they want to do, it's not going to stop me from being prepper and being prepared. I hope everybody really sits back and thinks about this video. And do me a favor. If you have somebody that is really on the verge or on the edge of, you know, well, you know, I just went through this and, or, you know, we're planning for this and there's so much stuff that is going on in this world and so much that we can't even control if we wanted to. It doesn't matter about politics. It doesn't matter about climate change. It doesn't matter about what is going on with the grand solar minimum. It doesn't matter if we're going to get hit by an asteroid. It doesn't matter about anything because we can't control it, folks. We can't control what is happening in this country, actually in this world. We can't control what is outside this world. All right, we're trying to get to Mars because we already ruined this planet. So let's go to Mars and see what there is there that we can take. And hopefully they take, when they start opening that up, I got a whole list of people I wish they would take. I'm sure everybody does. I'd even play, pay for their plane ticket. Might cost a little bit of money. I'll just have to hit my offshore account. If you get what I'm saying. So, in the end, don't let people label you, pressure you, threaten you with social acceptance, call you crazy, ridicule you, or anything else because you want to become a prepper. You're the one that has the control. You're the one that has to make sure that, in the end, you are providing for your family and you have a way to survive. So until next time, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and I will catch all of you on the flip side.